take time to be holy. Speak off with thy love. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him, whatever be time. In joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord, and looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul, each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit to fountains of love, thou shalt soon be fitted for service above. To us, you are our father, a loving father, a kind father, a merciful father. Father, we praise you because you brought us here to do us good. We are grateful for all we have been hearing and the rest we are going to hear today. We pray, Lord, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. For this very message, I pray, God that you will open the heart of every individual because Lord it is so important without holiness no man shall see you and the holiness that we take to heaven is what we want to think about and talk about and possess today so Lord I pray the grace for every one of us to open our heart the grace to surrender everything in place of this very thing grant to everyone in the name of Jesus Holy Ghost, we surrender to you. Father, I pray that you will take your place and speak to your people. I pray, Lord, that none of us will go empty-handed after this message. You will wash, you will cleanse, and we will possess our possession in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. So, it is you again. Train them up the way they should go. And that is what this woman, our proverb that one woman did. You will see how her children are. That's it. She did. When you are even pregnant, you are about to get, give your life to, I mean to born now. Some people begin to pray for their children in the belly. They put their hand and they are praying. You will be a, a pastor. If you are a man, you will be a pastor's wife. Your life will be like this. And they are praying for that child from they believe the child can hear when it's about maybe seven to eight months. So some women start the training from the womb. Train up a child in the way it should go. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So now the, what is the relationship of this woman and her children? Look at verse 15. Again, we just read it. When she rises up early, she makes sure she feeds all her children. Our children are not the ones that go to school and they are hungry. They are holding their belly, their stomach. Or they are the people that will go and sit by other children like this. The children that are eating their biscuit, your child will go and sit with them and be looking until the child carry one biscuit and give to your child. It's not so. Please don't do that one. Feed your child. Rise up early and feed your child. That's what this woman does. Verse 21 again. What is our relationship with the children? Verse 21, she's not afraid of the snow for the household, for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. That means that she clothes her family members very well. You are there. Maybe you are from a cold place. When it's cold season, your children have no sweater. From Qatar to cough, from cough to fever, 
That's how you'll be running up and down to hospital. You are not clothing the children. And it's not lack of money. It's lack of carelessness or you don't know. So God will make us to be virtuous today in Jesus' name. To be virtuous is that you must be diligent, you must be careful, you must be caring, and you take care of everything so that your family is not lacking. None of them, no group there is lacking. Verse 27, talking of her children, she looked well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. She's not a lazy woman. She looked well. Her children have good clothes, even if they are not expensive. They are not, you are not the one that they are always beating your children in school because it doesn't have uniform. Uh -uh. How is it? Please, don't, these people, these children will develop insecurity. This woman is not so. She clothed her children. They are well clothed. Verse what? Verse 28. Look at it. Her children arise up and call her what? Wonderful. That's this woman. Your children will call you blessed in Jesus' name. And when they grow up, when you have trained them, love them. Remember, love is not spoilage. Love is not that you are pampering and they spoil. No. Love is tempered with tempered with discipline. That means side by side. You love the child, but let the child know, ah, my mommy doesn't tolerate any sin. That's how you bring them up to be balanced. Praise the Lord. Your children will we call you blessed in Jesus' name. Another thing of this woman, her attitude toward her household, her maidens and her servants. Look at verse 15. She rise up early and give her household food and she give portion to her maidens who are serving her. This woman is not the one that has two pots in her house. One is for you and your husband, the other one now. Eh, hey, we have cooked this one. You can just make your own and put only magio. Don't take the fish. You are not a holy woman. Don't have virtues. This woman, what she cooks for her household is what she gives to the maidens and the servants. And that's what it is to be godly. If you fear God, you have a master in heaven. That's what this virtuous woman does. I pray God will give us today in Jesus' name. Amen. What again do we see? Verse 21, she also clothed them. She makes sure she doesn't say, this one is not my child. This one is my child. No. She makes clothes for all of them. The moment you accept a child from anywhere that you want to bring up, you have taken that child to be a part of your family. And once you bring segregation or partiality, you are not a holy woman. Hallelujah. Are we hearing me? So that is what God wants us to know. Verse 27. She looked where to the ways of all of them. If the house help is sick, she doesn't ignore that one. That is not my child. He is sick, she send that one to school. If your own child is sick, you keep the child at home to take to hospital. You are not godly. You are not part of this virtues we are talking. You are not treating the other child the way you treat your child. So you look where to all your household, including your servants and your maidens. In fact, when you have people serving you, my sisters, you are supposed to watch the life of that person. How is this person doing? Is he getting lean? Why are you lean? Is your food not enough? Some people don't care at all. I won't have time to tell you a story. But I pray that you are not the one because you want to go to heaven in Jesus' name. What other department? Our relationship with our neighbors. Verse 2020. 20. Bible says in verse 20 of the same chapter, look in your Bible. She stretched out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reached forth. She reached forth her hands to the needy. That is this woman. Her relationship with her neighbor. This is the woman 
Her neighbor come there. Please, do you have oil? Hey, I don't have oil this night. She will go tell her, uh, maybe uh, Mercy or Elizabeth. Okay, go and bring our uh, oil something. It remains more. Then bring it. Bring your container. She will send uh, maybe one of her child. She will share what she has. Yes. They needy. They may not come to her. She looks around them. She gives them money. This needy could be in the church. This needy could be in your office. This needy could be in the society. And you wrap things for them. In fact, a virtuous woman. Visitors don't come to your house and they go empty. You try to look for something. That's what I've known of virtuous women I've come across. You are going, it may be a small thing, they will wrap it and give you. They will wrap it and give you that you don't come here empty. And you don't come there and you don't drink anything. I've gone to houses where if it's ordinary water, they make sure that you sit down, they, have no, they will go and bring water before you. Because Bible says, if you give this my servant, anyone that give a cup of water, I believe they remember that. Instead of you to go empty, this is a virtuous woman. Praise the Lord. Our in-laws are among these neighbors. No, we know what in-law problem is. Some of us here, hmm, our in-laws don't want to come to our house. And it's because of you. God will change you today in Jesus' name. Because it doesn't depict holiness. Let's, there are a lot of examples we can give. Your in-law come to your house. The bed where you put your brother to sleep. Your in-law coming from equal uh, uh, place. From a far place as your brother or sister who will come. He come, you won't give him or her that place to sleep. Some women are like that. The place you give to your own people. When your husband people come, they don't eat in those places. What does that mean? Unholiness. Unholiness. You are, you, are, you are differentiating. Why a holy woman doesn't do that? So your in-law should do relax. If they are of age, like your own sister, or like your cousins and nieces, you do the same to them, when, like you do to your own people. So that it will gladden your husband's heart. He will relax more with you. Truly, you are not from the same parents. Of the, it takes grace. But this grace is enough for the holy woman. That's what we are saying. Praise the Lord. And so then, we also look at our life in her home keeping. In her home keeping. The Bible says she walks with her hand to support her husband. That one is even the, the, the number here is more. She's industrious. Verses 13, you can write those who are writing. That she's industrious. She, she goes, she buys things from afar. She, she's industrious. She will go to trade. She buy land and so on. Verses 13, 16. If you are writing, verse 17, verse 18, 19, 24. She's a hard-working person. She's industrious. Her candle doesn't go out in the night. Many of us, we just finish packing, cleaning our kitchen in the night. We just go to bed. Boom! You lie there. Till when? Six in the morning. You don't wake up again. Neither do you wake up to pray, nor to prepare anything for the following day. Then when you wake, you are rushing, bri -bri -bri like this. Your children have to go to school. My husband has to eat, and so on. It's not this woman, no. Very hard working. Her candle doesn't go out in the night. She finishes the remaining of her work before she goes to bed. Praise the Lord. That is her. She's hard working. She's industrious. She's diligent. She's wise. You know, one of the things too that you see with her, the Bible tells us there that she, she opened her mouth with wisdom. When she talks to people outside, they are gladdened. They are happy. She's wise. She's discreet. Then her relationship with her God. If you look at this woman, she's born again. Sanctified. She fears the Lord. If you look at verses 20, 29, 30, 29. 30 says, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord 
she shall be praised. Verse 29, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Because of our time, I won't be able to tell you many others. There are all plenty in the Bible. All these virtuous women everywhere in the Bible. You have Sarah, her pastor talked to us today. You have Ruth, who cleaved to her mother-in-law. She will not let her go. And that is what we are saying. How this woman loved her mother-in-law, like her own mother. Some of us are just enduring our mother-in-law. If they come, you put your nose in one way and say, oh, when will this woman go? This is uh, Naomi and Ruth. She doesn't want to leave her. Though we use her as an example of how we will cleave to Jesus Christ. When you choose Jesus, don't let him go. Hallelujah. Then we have people like Mary, Mary, Mary of Bethany, who love, uh, who are chosen the best thing. Jesus Christ says so. They are chosen the better thing. That's what is the word of God and being with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know one thing, we say we are holy, but how many of us love being with Jesus in reality? You love talking to people more than Jesus. You go to, to, to pray, very soon you have finished and come out. You want to be chatting with people, church, 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 all over the place. You don't love Jesus. Look at Mary. She didn't even want to cook. When we look at it, that she's not uh, hospitable. But look at the answer Jesus gave to Martha. One thing is needful. And Mary had chosen this part. My sister, you don't do alone with God. You don't have time to spend with Jesus, to read the word, to meditate. Let him talk to you. Let him shape in your life. Let him lead you. You don't have time. Then you don't know Jesus. You don't know Jesus. But look at Mary. And of course, then other ones like Mary Magdalene, that with other people like Jesus' wife and Susanna and so on, following Jesus, ministering to him. These are virtuous works, good works. How much do we care for our pastors, our local coordinators with us? What do we do for them? What do we do for them? When you are even coming here like this, do you remember anybody who is here that could have something? You may say, I don't have. But you know, if you make maybe kunu, or something in your house. And you remember your coordinator. Say, okay, uh, James, my son, come and take this one. Go give our coordinator. Wonderful. That is an act of virtuousness. Yes. This is a good work. It's not much. Or you are going to fellowship, you just buy orange or something, and you give the coordinator. You know, Bible says that they that uh, you don't, you don't uh, cover the mouth of the earth that thread the corn. And if they have ministered to us good things, don't they desire, deserve our things? Many of us don't think about it. That's not what I'm preaching today. I'm talking to you about little, little things that we can do. Which Mary, Magdalene, and the other women were following Jesus, ministering to him out of what? Their needs. Now, Jesus is not here physically. Do you do it to the men of God, true ones? Do you do that? God will help us in Jesus' name. Then, we have talked about her homekeeping. Then we talk about her God. That this woman knows her God. In fact, the Bible tells us, let's open to Jeremiah chapter 9. See what the Bible says. You are a woman there, you don't know God. My sister, please, everything else you are doing will be in vain. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. That's what the Lord say. Thus say the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercised loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, said Lord. Do you know God? My sister, you start small by small. The moment the Bible says, Matthew chapter, two, chapter 11, verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. The moment you are born again, you start to, to learn of God. Go to the Bible, you read it, 
And as you are learning of God, you are learning his mercy, you are learning his kindness, you are learning his faithfulness, you are learning his provision, and you are learning his love for you above all. You know, my brethren, my sisters, when you know God loves you, everything that happened to you, you will be thanking him. He can't be wicked because you know him. That he can't be wicked. And you know he's faithful. If you don't know God, you will be running helter skelter when anything happens. It's very important. Know God. Know God. And look at how God praised this woman. I love it. And I tell God, many women have done virtuously, but you excel them all. I tell God, I say, God, I'm the one. Please, I beg you. I'm the one. I want to excel them all. He will put my feet to doing it. Won't you say you are the one? You are the one. You are the one that excel them all. Because that grace is put on the table for all of us. Come boldly to the throne of grace and withdraw to do all these good works. It's not special. You can do it. And you will start tonight in Jesus' name. Now, um, we, we, well, we are looking at time, but I think I have a little time. What is the other area? Other area we have there? Her personality. This woman cares for herself. Let's see what concerns her. She cares for herself. Most of her time we have read, she is clothed in scarlet. She, 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 the scarlet is like purple. It's a good, good, durable, pleasant dress. It gives us an idea. Anything say in the Bible, whether it's one verse, it teaches you a lesson. That this woman is not worldly. She's not worldly. But she cares for her body. She takes care of herself. She eats well. She doesn't eat too much and becomes so robust. But she cares for herself. In fact, Bible says one of the fruit of the spirit is to be temperate. Temperance. Self-control. This woman cares for herself. She dresses well. But she's separate from the world. She's not worldly. She's not worldly. But she dresses well. Praise the Lord. Now we come now to look at... Um, we come to look at if we know that these good works can be demonstrated by people. And me, I want to tell us that God demands and desires these good works from us. God desires it. He expects it. He demands it. Let us look at Titus chapter 2. Open to it so that it will be serious for you. Because you may say, if I like, I do. If I don't like, it's not like that. God demands these good works. These virtues, Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Titus 2, 14. God demands good works from us. So that today, as we pray, if you have been coming short of it, you are going to change. You are going to pray and you will change in Jesus' name. 2.14. The Bible says here, who gave himself for us? Am I right? Yes. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of what? Good works is essential. Look at chapter 3 verse 38. Sorry, chapter 3, verses 8 and 14. 3, verse 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things, you must maintain good works. You see, your holiness without good works is vain. No heaven. Good works. So that is what the Lord expects us. 14. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be, um, that be, be not unfruitful. You see, when you are not maintaining these good works, you are unfruitful. You can't make heaven. That is the reason that is very important. 
what do we say finally now? I want to tell us that if these things are very important and God demands it, and God says it's very, very scarce, the virtuous woman is scarce. You need to develop it. Then we need to develop these virtues. Finally, we want to see briefly development of virtues in women. You are not yet born again. You can still develop these virtues. But we want to see how you can do it. So that you won't say, I don't have power. Me, I have even been trying, but I cannot do it. There is a way of doing it. You can have these good works. You can develop it. Number one, you must become born again. The reason is that these good works or fruit that is seen in the life of a believer, the Christian character, the basis is from the spirit. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. The basis of it is the spirit itself. It's not you, it's not me. That is the foundation of it. So then, we must be born again. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, against us, there is no law. That is the beginning. If you are not born again, the spirit is not in you. You cannot bear this fruit. You can't have this goodness. You can't have these virtues. Because it is the spirit that bears this fruit. It's not the fruit of man. So when you are born again, to start with, the spirit comes in you. This fruit begins to show what we have now. Then you can later it will perfect. Number two is sanctification. When you now have the spirit of Christ, then you will find that you can't totally do the will of God yet. You can't do this do good work. Why? Because you have anger, you have malice, you have bitterness. Somebody offend you. How will you do? I, I gave her something that day. She saw me today, didn't even greet me. And that's the reason that you, will, you turn your back on her. So then the sin of the heart will not allow you to totally depict, demonstrate these good works. Therefore, you need sanctification. You must be sanctified. God will cleanse you. You need to be sanctified after you are born again. So that damn nature will be removed from your life. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 says that the Lord your God shall circumcise your heart. When your heart is circumcised and you are now free from inbred sin, you can love people. You will love God with all your heart. You will love your brother, you love your sister, even your enemy. They do something to you, it's nothing. That's why Paul can say, none of these things move me. That will help you. Because the Holy Spirit comes in full measure now. He will direct you on what to do. Maybe you want to give somebody clothes. Then the Spirit comes as you pray, he says, no, give this person food. It's food this person needs. Because you don't know. Being full in the Holy Spirit is not only for the power of service, but for your service to be even acceptable, the Holy Ghost has to direct you. Because the Bible says, when the Spirit comes, He will teach you all things. He will teach you all things. That is it. So we need the baptism in the Holy Spirit. God Almighty will do these things in Jesus' name. So these are what you cannot do by yourself. They are the basis how you can produce fruit or show these good works. We need them. And you will pray for them today. You are not born again. The Bible says, ye must be born again. If you are not born again, every good work you are struggling to do is dead works. The Bible calls them dead works. They are not recorded. You don't have a page where the good things will be recorded for you. So get born again. Then get sanctified. Get baptized. Then what again do you do now? When you are, have these three basic experiences, you will now begin to add to them. Add to them yourself. If you look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verses, one, uh, verses 5 to 11, we won't read it. The Bible says, add to your virtue. Um, let's, let me look at it. Add to your virtue. 2 Peter 
chapter 1, verse 5. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly love, and all these say, if these things are in you, then, if these things are, if, but if you like these things, then you are blind. But if these things are in you, you will never be barren. You will always be fruitful. Hallelujah. We are going to pray to ask the Lord to help us. And you are going to tell the Lord that God will help you. As you get these things and you keep adding by reading your word, by praying, asking the Holy Spirit, God Almighty will make you full. You will bear fruit and God will be happy with you in Jesus' name. May we rise up and talk to the Lord now. Talk to the Lord. Do you bear fruit? You have seen what you are doing and what is the idea from the Bible example. Please let's pray together. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord now that you must have Christian character. You must show forth these good fruits. If you don't show good fruit, then God will catch you on the last day. You may say, I'm doing miracle. I'm doing this. God will look at you. Do you have Christian character? Please, my sister, open your mouth and tell the Lord. You need these good, good works. You need these good works. Tell the Lord to fill you. To fill you with good works. Are you born again? If you are not born again, talk to the Lord. You want to be born again. Because without it, as we see, you don't have the fruit of the Spirit at all. You cannot do anything on your own. Without me, you can do nothing. If you are born again, pray to be sanctified. Please open your mouth and pray. Let's talk to the Lord that God will help you. Please, my sister, pray and talk to the Lord. I'm telling you this because the Lord is coming. And when he comes and sees that you are only parading with, with professional words, I'm born again, I'm this one, but you have no good work to show, no heaven. Open your mouth and God change my life. Change my life. Maybe you, you don't know. Tell the Lord, that, please help me not to be forgetful. Help me. Let me produce fruit. Let me do good work. Works. Let me have these virtues. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you. That you will not live here unless God transform you to the level you can see your good works. Become a virtuous woman. Become a virtuous woman. You have seen all those departments. How is your life? How is your life in the office? Do you show good works in your office? God can change you today. You need to talk to him. You need to talk to him. You have heard. As for hearing, you have heard that your holiness without works, no heaven. Without virtue, no heaven. And yet God has made provision. Talk to the Lord. If you are struggling to do good, maybe you don't have the spirit of God. Maybe you are not born again. You are just trying. You still have sin in your life indeed. You cannot even do good works. Sin side by side with good works. That one, the work is dead. Ask the Lord to save you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to pray with us. Close your eyes. You are there. We know why you are here. Is to be cleansed, to be shaped for the Lord's coming. One. And to be prepared as end time army for Jesus. How do you do that? You have to start with a life with Jesus. Otherwise, you cannot do any good works. And what work can we do if we are not even showing any good works? So close your eyes, check your life. Is there sin in your life? Side by side with the goodness, goodness you are showing. We want to pray with you. You will get rid of it. Because this sin is a weight. And Bible says, cast away this weight. And run. You can't run with sin. Our eyes are closed. And you are sincere. You want to move forward. Is that not so? You are not coming here for fun. You know something is in your life. There is sin. No matter how small. You are going to raise up your hand and say, God, remove this thing. I'm not going to call you here. 
But I want you to indicate to God. Indicate to God, God, there is sin in my life. I want you to wipe it out. Why? Because with sin in your life, you cannot run far. You can't run far. You'll be deceiving yourself. Oh, raise up your hand. Let's pray together. Where are you? You have sin in your life. Talk to the Lord. You are there. I see you now. We don't have time to call you. But I want you to be sincere. You have sin in your life. As you raise your hand up, you tell God, I'm not going with this sin. I'm dropping this sin at the, at the cross of Jesus. Jesus is here. Why are you going to go with sin? Let those hands be up and be sincere with Jesus. Cry to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. A sinner will not be able to do any good work. You have no fruit that is acceptable. Ask the Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Confess those sins to God. Whatever is the sin, believe God will do it for you. With your prayer of faith, God will forgive you. You will go clean. In Jesus' name we pray. Have those hands up with faith in your heart that God will change you. Raise those hands up. I want to pray with you. As you raise it, I pray you will answer with me because this is very essential. You want to come out of sin so you can bear fruit. My God, answer with me if your hand is up there. My God, I know I'm a sinner. And a sinner cannot bear good fruit. I will not be able to produce any virtue. Forgive my sins, O Lord. Forgive my sins, O God. Cleanse me with the blood Jesus shed for me. From today, I deny you sin. I will not sin again. My father, make me your child. Give me power over sin. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Give me power to follow you from today. Change my life. Transform me. Give me power to bear fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. If you know you have not been doing good works, you are so stingy, you don't have anything to show. You say you are born again. You know you are truly born again. Raise up your hand join these people before I combine the, the prayer together. You are there, you have not been doing any good works. You say, I'm born again. You truly, you may be born again, but today you are exposed now. You're going to do it now. So let everybody raise up hand. Who know I've not been doing good works? I want to pray with us. The power of God will come upon your life and you become fruitful. You will begin to show virtues. That's what we want, so that you will become fruitful. And then you will be able to promote this gospel. Is your hand up? Together with those who are repenting. Let me pray finally now. My God and my Father, I pray. Thank you for what we have heard today. We thank you for being with us. We thank you, God, for speaking to us personally. Thank you, Father, because of what we have heard. Because we have been shown that without good works, without virtues, holiness is vain. That one is just a verbal pronunciation. Therefore, God, I pray for your children who raise up their hand first. They are not born again. My God, my Father, the Bible says, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Come and cleanse them with the blood in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, King of glory, I pray from today, those your children, they will be joined to you as children now. You make them your children. You forgive their sins. You write their name in the book of life and give them power to bear fruit in Jesus' name. And for this, my sisters who are raising up their hand, they have not been bearing fruit. They have not virtues to show for. Oh God, I pray from today that they will begin to bear fruit. They will begin to show for good works in Jesus' name. Oh God, make every one of us fruitful and virtuous in Jesus' name. We bless you, Father. Be honored, O oh God. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. I will follow. Follow, follow, I will follow, I will follow. Jesus Christ, my Savior, will you follow? Follow, 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 I will follow Jesus.
Give me grace to follow, above and grace to follow. I need your grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-902. 3940 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved hallelujah Jesus I believe in you you are my
Savior. I believe. 